But what does the man who knew her best think about all of this? Diana's former butler and friend of 10 years, Paul Burrell. Hi, Paul. Hello, Mark. How I much more was... of this do we have to suffer? Yeah, it's, it's a shocker. You knew Diana intimately well. You were her butler, Paul, her confidant and her friend. Yes. What would she make of this alleged fight between the boys? She would be appalled by it. She'd say, Harry, stop this now. You two um, are equal in my eyes. I love you both equally. And you should be together always. Poor William doesn't have a voice in all of this because, you see, William chose the dignity in silence route. Harry has decided to go public with very personal and private information and speaking on behalf of his brother has washed so much dirty laundry in public. Mm. He's very hurt and very angry young man. Um, but remember, Mark, there's two sides to every story. And we may never hear the other side of this story because those people are staying quiet, and quite rightly too. I'm very interested to, to learn what he th thinks about what happened when his mother uh, passed, because I was there during that whole time. And remember, Harry was looking at this whole scenario through an 11 year old's eyes. He was a child. He couldn't see that his father actually needed someone to stand beside and help him through this tragedy, too. This was the mother of his two children. And, you know, Camilla was there for Charles and give her credit. She stuck by him and stuck with the program all this time. And she deserves better than this. And just before the coronation, I think the king deserves better than this from his son. Harry always knew his place. Harry always knew that he was the spare. He had a very privileged life. Stop whinging, Harry. And just get along with your private life, with your lovely wife and your family. Why are you creating all of this media furore around you to make yourself more relevant or to make yourself more um, talkable? I have no idea why he's doing all of this. It's appalling. It's just appalling. His late grandmother, um, our dear queen, would be rolling around in her grave thinking, what have I done wrong? Harry, you had every opportunity to go to your grandmother as the queen. You knew how to. You could have talked all of this through with her in private. None of this should be made public. It should be a family matter behind closed doors. So stop it. Stop it now before, before you do damage, which cannot be repaired. And how can you possibly come to England and sit in the, in the congregation in Westminster Abbey and watch your father be crowned king. I think you would be a hypocrite if you did that. Indeed. Now, you know the boys very well. Does this behaviour, this alleged fight, surprise you? What was your observation of their relationship when they were growing up, Paul? No, the boys always got along tremendously well together. They were always sparring. They were always jousting with each other. William was always the officer. Harry was always the troops. And they just got along great. And mm. their life was running in parallel with each other. Diana always taught Harry that his job was to support William. His job was to help him in his role to be king, not to derail him, not to pull the rug from underneath his feet and not to destroy the monarchy. Now, there's a great confusion here because the public feel Diana was against the monarchy. No, she wasn't. She was unhappy with her, her husband at times and unhappy the way she was treated. But she firmly supported the royal family and she loved the queen. The queen loved her. Prince Philip loved her, too. And really, Harry, what are you thinking? Why are you doing this? Is it really all about money? Because some things actually are worth more than money. Paul, there was a point in time when Harry was arguably the second most popular member of the royal family behind the Queen herself. What went wrong? What happened? Yes. I, I love Harry. He's Diana's son as much as William is. But Harry's just gone completely off the rails. What happened was, well, Meghan came along and his world changed. She mesmerised him. She showed him a different path. Some of it was good and some of it not so good. And his world changed completely. And he went 
in a complete tangent to mm. William's world. I think the moment it all came unstuck was when Meghan actually saw how William and Kate lived their life in their beautiful apartment at Kensington Palace, and they were living in a two-bedroomed Nottingham cottage. Then the penny dropped, and I think Meghan then realized, I can never be a star of this show. I'll, also, I'll always be an also-ran. And I don't think Meghan's the kind of lady that wants to be an also-ran. She wants to be out up front. How does this sorry saga play out, Paul? What do you think is going to happen between the two families? I think there's an enormous rift now between the two families. It's very hard to build a bridge across across that chasm. It's going to end in tears. It's going to in, end in more estrangement. And it's not going to end happily. They're creating a media storm around themselves. Exactly what they didn't want in Britain. They didn't want the press and the media. Now Harry's appearing on every chat show you can imagine in America. On, C- on Good Morning America tomorrow, on CBS tonight. He's done uh, uh, every program possible to promote his book. Is that the life you wanted, Harry? In the media spotlight, mm. pursued mm. by the paparazzi, exactly like your mother. I thought that's what you didn't want. So think about it. It's not too late to turn around and mend it. Indeed. And what are your thoughts about his relationship with Meghan? Do you see that marriage going the distance? Because if it doesn't work out, and of course we do hope it works out with their lovely two small children, but if it doesn't, he's going to look back on this period and think that he paid a very high price for that young woman. I think you're right. I think for the time being, children are the glue that holds a marriage together. And for the time being, everything is fine. But there will be a time when they're much older and they have chance to reflect on the past, the damage they've done and the destruction within the royal family. I think it will end in tears and Harry will return to England one day. But you know what? His brother will put his arm around him and say, welcome home, because that's the kind of guy that William is. Do you think the British people will say welcome home too, ultimately, Paul? I'm I'm not so sure about the British people. You see, the British people are, are, are very critical. And I think right now he's probably the most unpopular member of the royal family. Is that Harry? I think right now. You better take that call. It probably says I'm Harry sorry. Mob. No, I think Harry. No, it's not Harry. Could be William. I think he's probably the most unpopular member of the royal family. Mm. Um, and he's going to have to go a long way to repair that damage. Um, the great British public don't like what's happening. They don't like to see one of their favorite sons down a path to destruction. And that's where he's headed. He's headed down a very wrong path. His brother knows that. His father knows that. Our country knows that. Harry doesn't because he's blinkered and mesmerized by this woman. No one knows those boys better than you and Paul. A privilege to hear your innermost thoughts. 